tonight uh, the broadcast on uh, on ABC and uh, Mike Breen, the reigning uh, Emmy Award winner. Bang. Uh, we spoke to Doris Burke Nobody last bangs, huh? week. She will be making sports television history tonight. The first female analyst to be part of a broadcast of NBA Finals action. That's She's wild. the first to do that. And it'll be great. And we all assumed that the man who's joining those two um, is just the Los Angeles Lakers head coach in waiting in J.J. Redick. There's been uh, a lot of buzz about that. Um, certainly since J.J. and LeBron have been doing a little bit of a podcast together <laughs> over the last uh, couple weeks, couple months. And the general sense was that uh, J.J. Redick was the Lakers coach in waiting, and we were just waiting for the finals to end. And that would just be the end of the coaching search that's been open ever since Darvin Ham got bounced once the Lakers got bounced from the playoffs. And then Adrian Wojnarowski held everybody's beer today. Certainly since there were some in the NBA information business who said yesterday it was Redick's job essentially to lose. And if that's the case, he's lost it. And according to Woj, he's never really had it. Mm -hmm. Because according to the Woj bomb today... The Los Angeles Lakers have been relentless in their pursuit. That's the word Woj used on ESPN this morning. Relentless in their pursuit of UConn back-to-back national champion head coach Dan Hurley. Relentless. And they've been on him since their job was open. He also called the other interviews that have been had as essentially informational Hmm. Hmm. and that it's been Hurley from the beginning. There is, according to Woj, I wrote down these words, traction. There is traction in the interview process right now as the Lakers are preparing what is called a massive long-term offer for Dan Hurley's services. And they view him as a quote-unquote program builder that will span the end of the LeBron Anthony Davis era into whatever the next era of Lakers basketball. And Hurley is quote-unquote listening. I okay. assume like Fraser Crane, I'm listening. Oh, wow. $100 million will <laughs> make you listen. Well, let's just say this. <laughs> um, as a man who has... Man. Left the state of Connecticut. As a man who has left the state of Connecticut and moved to Los Angeles to start a new career. Hmm. He gone. He gone. <laughs> uh, I'll be very honest with you. I believe he gone. Yeah. And I will say this. I mean, obviously, if Woj is saying it's a massive long-term offer and they are relentless, and they are 100% into it, and they're going to put the proper money on the table. So a guy who just signed a six-year, $32 million extension to try and do something in college basketball that John Wooden was the last to do, which is win three in a row, and to be able to etch your name in that, style of the record book that yes you'd need to come correct in a way that the Lakers are not known for coming correct in a way for their head coaches we were talking the other day that the last one that they kind of paid in this manner at top of the line was Phil Jackson and we've watched Ty Lu come to Los Angeles but not the Lakers and we've seen them with Frank Vogel and we've seen them with Darvin Ham and we've seen them not go and give top of the line money to head coaches Budenholzer is now in Phoenix you watch that happen we just sort of all assumed that they would just keep on keeping on like that and we all know about assuming (laughs) because I will say this Rob Palenka Michigan man And yes, Los Angeles would have to say they now would have not one, 
but two reigning national champion head coaches who left college to go coach a team in Los Angeles. I will say to Jeannie Buss, this would be an absolute monster coup. Certainly because LeBron, you know LeBron would like it because fascinatingly enough, LeBron, we know he thinks Dan Hurley is on the cutting edge of coaching and coaching offense because Dan Hurley's special brand of coaching and play calling, how about this? You can't make this up. It was brought up, broken down in a brilliant conversation on a podcast hosted by the guy we all thought was going to get this job and may still in J.J. Redick on his old man in the three pod. He brought up to Dan Hurley a particular offensive set that Redick hadn't really seen and wanted to break down. And the three of the two of these guys went on a three minute conversation that I would definitely, you know, send you to go to the internet tubes to go check out. LeBron wrote when he heard this conversation about Hurley breaking down the offense with J.J. Redick, he's so damn good. Three exclamation points along with his staff, super creative with their O. Love it. April 19th, 2024. Who would have thought we would be here on June 6th, 2024, talking about J.J. Redick maybe not being the next coach of the Lakers, Dan Hurley might be the next head coach of the Lakers. We all know LeBron would kind of, I would imagine, approve it. And in this day and age where eyeballs are important, hearts and minds of fans are important, I know this is a Laker town. And once upon a time when the Lakers were really down and the Clippers were looking terrific, I even made mention into this microphone, could this possibly in any way, shape, or form twitch in the direction of being a Clipper town? Oh, man. Okay. And that was silly. You didn't check your mentions that night. No. It was silly, but the Clippers are opening up a new dome. They're moving out. They're creating their own space. They're creating their own brand. They're creating their own sense of selves. And they're also opening up a brand new dome that I know many people in this town are curious what it will look like and hear about, and it'll be cutting edge. And they've got all sorts of toilets and bells and whistles. (laughs) I can help it. Wow. And... Folks are going to be curious, what's it like there? What are they going down there and whatever? And if they say, come see LeBron and Anthony Davis and the rest of the Lakers with the two-time defending national champion head coach of UConn basketball, Dan Hurley, and you never know what the hell he's going to do on the sidelines, right? What, 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 what push somebody? Yeah, saying? he's gonna he's, <laughs> he, he's gonna shove D'Angelo Russell or whatever in the back to go cover somebody. Like who knows? Come see Dan Hurley. That's a metric that you have to entertain and also tell the rest of the league. The Lakers will spend on coaches. They will think outside the box. They will be aggressive. And if you really want to extrapolate it out, I mean, who better? Who would who who better to coach your son than Dan Hurley if that's the way LeBron's thinking? If he's going to be there long term, oh, so I'll play with my son and then I'll set him up with a guy that I'm very happy to have coach my son and be the architect of his career. And if you're Dan Hurley, what better time than now? Your stock is as high as it's going to get. <laughs> that's a good point. And college is as off the rails in terms of knowing what the future is than it's ever been. And you're sitting up there in UConn in the NIL world and sitting up there in UConn in the world of, you know, meeting to compete apparently at some point about with other institutions of higher learning about being able to pay your players and collectives and, and um, also your facilities and, the Lakers come knocking and offer you potentially a generationally enriching contract and opportunity to come coach the Los Angeles Lakers and you get to scratch the NBA itch that you've made known that you're interested in one day scratching? Yo, where do I sign? How do you say no to this? Yeah. Can I, I don't even need to know the number. Can I just say why, Mike? 
Okay. Well, like you've always said, when it comes to coaches and family, right, the wife plays a big part. Correct. Oh, absolutely. So you have Danny Hurley and his wife. She's from Jersey. Yeah, he's she didn't want to move. Right. He, they're both East Coast I see to it. the bone, I got to you. the core. He was the Arizona State coach, though. Yeah, but... Like they've already lived on the West Coast before. But now he... Wife, he got to go back home with the family. I'm just saying that could be a, a way. He's going to have way more job security in Connecticut than he's going to have in Los Angeles. You know what I mean? I'm just saying these are just some reasons why it might not be. No, because when so when easy. it came to when it, you you know you're you're also thinking of his brother, unfortunately, Chris. No. Oh. Um, but when it when it came to him, right. when him when it came to him maybe being the coach of Kentucky. Remember that got bandied about when and that got dropped. When Cal, well, he was also saying you know his. His wife is from New Jersey, yeah, and right. you know, I'm, like I'm, UConn was as far as he would take it, or what have you. I, I, I understand. I, I understand East Coast and whatever. But if the Lakers are going to put the scratch on the table that I'm thinking of, you know, uh, you can tell the misses about PJs and things like that. <laughs> they can be by coast. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but but you're right. There is the personal aspect of it, and I, 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 I am just only considering just the sense of his professional playing of his professional coaching career yeah. you know so uh this one sounds to me like it's it's too tough to turn down unless the lakers don't offer certain x y and z because he does have every every piece of leverage right now which is why i'm like his his leverage will never get any higher good point uh, unless he does win three in a row, but then the Lakers' job won't won't be available to him. One would think they will fill it with somebody that they will obviously give a longer term contract to. The last thing they want to do is Vogel out, Ham in, this guy in, that guy now out, and move things around. And, and um, you know, one last thing: his leverage also could be name a wealthy UConn alum. Name a handful of them. They must be getting together right now, figuring out how do we how do we put a stop to this. You know, I, I don't know how you do. If the Lakers come correct, if yeah, they come correct, tough to turn. You know, I, I I I cannot imagine Dan Hurley's not the next head coach of the Lakers, and that would send a lightning bolt through Laker Nation and this town to add Dan Hurley to Jim Harbaugh and Sean McVay. And Ty Lu, you know, and Lincoln Riley, Lincoln Riley yeah. and our friend, you know, got to say Deshaun Foster, who yep. we're very big fans of here. You know, I mean, this would be exciting in this town. Very exciting in this town. And I say to the Lakers down the street, tip my cap to you. You kept this one um, underneath the radar. Literally down the street, too. I do. <laughs> I know. Right there. I love it. What an idea. And if it doesn't work, you go back to college. Oh, you'll be the most sought-after college coach I on the market. But you I can name your price. I don't know how it wouldn't work. I don't know. Well, I mean, Darvin Ham thought it would never not work. I got it. I, I don't know. Her, thought Hurley he'd be just here uh, after winning a title. I guess so. And... You're right. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free.